This is uh, 149th session of the morning devotion. And we're beginning with him 200. Come Holy Ghost, Creator, come from thy bright heavenly throne. Come Holy Ghost, Creator, come from thy bright heavenly throne. Come take possession of our souls and make them all thy own. Thou who are called the paraclet, best gift of God above, the living spring, the living fire, sweet unction and true love. Thou who art seven foot in thy grace, finger of God's right hand, his promise teaching little ones to speak and understand. O oh, guide our minds with thy blessed light, with love hearts in flame. And with thy strength, which never decays, confirm a mortal frame. Far from us drive a deadly foe, through peace unto us bring. And through all perils lead us safe beneath thy sacred wing. Through thee may we the Father know, through thee the eternal Son, and thee the Spirit of them both thrice blessed three in one. O oh, glory to the Father be with his co equal Son. The same to the great Paraclet, while endless ages run. I want to lift up our voice to bless the Almighty Father for how he took us through the week and have brought us to this weekend, Saturday, 17th of October. We want to come before the Almighty Father. We want to appreciate him for his goodness. We want to appreciate him for his care. We want to appreciate him for his protection and provision and everything that he has done to us. Blessed Redeemer, we come this morning to thank you because of... Uh, your mercies uh, that cannot be quantified. We want to thank you because of your love, your care, your concern, your provision, your protection, and uh, the kindness of the Lord upon our lives. We thank you because of uh, the word of God we had this week and the things you use the word to achieve in our lives. We want to thank you because of the open heaven we enjoyed in everything. We want to thank you because of the favor that uh, you brought our ways. We want to thank you because of the miraculous. We want to thank you because of the joyous. We want to thank you because of the showers of heaven that you caused to come down upon our lives that brought refreshing. We want to thank you because the week has been encouraging me. It has been refreshing. It has been a hopeful. It has been quite uh, encouraging time we have said lord in glory be thou glorified be thou magnified as we sit to listen to the almighty father this morning we are trusting that the spirit of the living god as usual will uh, bring the uh, morning refreshing as usual our tongue uh, will be open 
and then our ears will be open and we will hear and we will speak with the tongue of the landed and we will hear with the ears of the of uh, that are opened even the ears that the lord has touched so this morning touch my tongue touch the ear touch my heart and touch the hearts let the word of god we're hearing this morning great father make a great impression deep impression in our lives let it reflect father in glory in our our ways and our actions and everything about us we thank you this morning because we know you have answered our prayers glory be to you in jesus name we have prayed amen the discourse of this morning is uh, entitled they returned with uh, joy they returned with joy and by god's grace we are going to uh, take a little time to show uh, that uh, uh, joy is uh, necessary for our inner life and uh, our physical life we are also going to show by God's grace how we can obtain joy from God, the source of joy. And uh, we will also show in the course of the discourse the effects of joy, the blessings, the things that joy uh, does in the life of a person that uh, has uh, it. So then the theme again is they returned with uh, joy. And we are drawing it from Luke chapter 10, 1 to 11 and 17 to 20. And this is the story of how Jesus Christ appointed 70 of his disciples to go to ministration and uh, gave them authority. And uh, on the wings of the authority Jesus gave them, they went in obedience. And as they went, the devils were subject unto them. They saw mighty things uh, wrought by the name of Jesus. And they came back uh, rejoicing. They came back joyful because of uh, the works of God they saw and how God used them. So then, can we read uh, Luke chapter 10 so we can get uh, from verse 1 to verse 11 so we can get the background uh, uh, information before we read 17 to 20 after this the Lord appointed uh, other 70 also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whither he himself would come therefore said he unto them the harvest rule is great but the laborers are few pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest Go your ways, and behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves, carry neither paws nor scrip nor shoes, and salute no man by the way. Instruction on how to go out for this assignment and come back with testimony. Carry neither paws nor scrip nor shoes, and salute no man by the way. And into whatsoever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if the Son of Peace be there, you are peace shall rest upon it if not it shall turn to you again they gave them uh, he gave them rules for oppression and then verse 7 and in the same house remain eat and drink such things as they give for the laborer is worthy of his hire go not from house to house and into whatever city you enter and they receive you is such things as as said before you you can see sets of uh, do's and the don'ts. There are many people in church and they think that when you come to Jesus, you don't need any instruction again. You need to do what you like. No. Jesus Christ gave them the rules, do's and don'ts. So those who are kicking against do's and don'ts that are being brought out by people who meant well for them, who are interested in the their lives and who know that eternity is real should read this scripture over and over so that they can see that these disciples of Jesus whom he has been with and trained them he didn't send them out without guidance without rule without do's and don'ts and so 
Now he told them who they will eat from their houses, and those they will not eat. Now verse uh, verse eight, and into whatever city you enter and they receive you, is such things as are said before you. And he they seek that are therein, and say so unto them, The kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. But into whatever city you enter and they receive you not. Go your ways out into the streets of the same and say, Even the very doors of your city, which cleaveth on us, we do wipe off against you. Notwithstanding, be ye sure of this, that the kingdom of God is come near unto you. Clear and express instruction. Now, on this note, on hearing this and other instructions he gave from 12 to 16 before now verse 17, he now dropped this. Uh, uh, truth that uh, uh, that uh, we drew our team from the return with joy verse 17 and the 70 returned again with joy all of them that he sent out without exception came back with joy and all of them said with one voice Lord even the devils are subject unto us through thy name and here jesus response he said unto them i behear satan as lightning fall from heaven behold i give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you he consolidated their power and then verse 20 notwithstanding in this rejoice not don't just rejoice because of the devil subject unto you or because of the exploits you have done but uh, uh, that the spirits are subject unto you but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven you find that that in this chapter we find two sources of joy now the joy the first joy that these disciples experienced came as a result of their obedience that brought about uh, exploit they did seeing satan falling like a lightning made them to be very very joyful then now they but the second source of joy the real joy jesus pointed them to which he said that the joy that comes because somebody's name is written in the book of life so there is joy that comes by going out in obedience to carry out the work of god and the result you see there is also joy that comes through uh, one being very sure that his name goes in the book of life that is called the joy of salvation so may we be told without uh, uh, any means and word that god is concerned about the joy of his people god is interested both in the old testament and in the new testament that his people should be happy that is why david said now in psalm chapter 51 can we read psalm 51 and see david talking about joy let's read from verse 8 make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice david was praying to god because he knew that god was concerned about his joy now verse um, 12 Restore unto me the joy of your salvation, or put me with your free spirit. When David had the experience of salvation, joy came into him. But then when his salvation began to have some problem, his joy began to dwindle, his joy began to reduce. So he had to pray. He was forced to cry to God to restore his joy. In John chapter 16, can we please read John chapter 16 and we read from verse 20 john 16 and verse 20 verily verily i say unto you that you shall weep and lament but the world shall rejoice and you shall be sorrowful but your sorrow shall be turned into joy jesus was assuring the disciples that uh, what is coming their way will produce a sadness and sorrow. However, the sadness and sorrow will not uh, live long just before joy comes. A woman, when she is uh, in travail, has sorrow, 
because her hour is come, hour of pain, hour of delivery. But as soon as she is delivered of her child, she remembered no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. Joy of that birth overtakes the sorrow and the pain. And you now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man take it from you. That is Jesus. And in that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. He that to have you ask nothing in my name, ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. You can now see also the joy of asking and receiving as stated here by Jesus Christ. And sorrow that will come as a result of uh, what Jesus will pass through and how it is going to shake them. But then how when they will see his resurrection, the joy that will uh, come. In chapter 15 of John verse 11. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Now Jesus took his time and speak and taught the people because he knew that on hearing him and on his being ministering to them that that will uh, produce joy. So joy comes through ministration as well, through encouraging words that is spoken by the pastor, by the minister of the gospel. So then joy is uh, necessary, very, very necessary, a necessity for inner peace, a necessity for inner strength, a necessity for also physical strength. And Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10, Nehemiah chapter 8, can we read verse 10? Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, Send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. So joy is uh, uh, produces strength. The joy of the Lord produces strength. Can we read Esther chapter 8 and the 16 to 17? Now Esther and her people were filled with sorrow and filled with uh, pain. But when God intervened in their matter, joy flooded their minds. Chapter 16, and the Jews had light and gladness and joy and honor because God intervened. And in every province and in every city, whithersoever the king's commandment and his uh, decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a good day. And many of the people, on seeing the joy, on seeing the intervention, became Jews. There was revival. There was a restoration as a result of God's intervention that produced joyful people who were once sorrowful. For the fear of Jews fell upon them. So then you can find out that also joy is necessary for even revival, a people that have no joy in of their service, a people that have no joy in what they are doing cannot be used to achieve that thing they are pursuing. In Esther chapter 9 and verse 22, as the days were in, the Jews rested from their enemies and the month which was turned unto them from sorrow to joy and from mourning into a good day. That, that, that they should make them days of feasting and joy and of sending portions one to another and gifts to the poor. So, you find out that, that uh, joy is necessary for inner peace, for a physical uh, health, and uh, for emotional stability. Many people have are suffering instability emotionally and health crisis because no inner peace no inner strength no joy joy serves as a, a medicine joy gives a, 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 a merry heart merry heart don't give a, a life like 
uh, medicine. He gives life. In Job 38 and verse 7, when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Can you see that? Shouting for joy because morning stars sang. Joy came and there was an eruption of shout. So then in Psalm 132 verses 9 and 16. So we need joy. It is a necessity for us to do the work. No person that is uh, sad, always sad, will be able to speak things properly, be able to bring out uh, life-changing truth from the Word of God. That is why those of us that are close to servants of God must make sure that uh, we avoid things that will cause them sorrow and make them lose joy. Effective ministration and effective release of the Word of God uh, is uh, a fruit of uh, joy of the Spirit. In Psalm 132, can we read verse 9 and 16? Let thy priests be clothed with righteousness, and let their sins shout for joy. And verse 16, I will also clothe her priests with salvation, and her sins shall shout aloud for joy. So when there is joy, there will be eruption of shout. I have stated earlier that uh, a merry heart doeth good, a joyful heart doeth good, like medicine. Can we prove it from Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 13 to verse 15? A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart the spirit is broken. Now, verse 14, the heart of him that had understanding seeketh knowledge, but the mouth of fools feedeth on foolishness. All the days of afflicted, uh, afflicted are evil. But he that is of a merry heart had a continual feast. Can you see that? Through joyful heart, people get into things that work. If there is no man that can successfully carry out God's assignment who is not doing it with joy, who is doing it with sorrow. Now, Apostle Paul said, if I carry out the ministration willingly and joyfully, I have a reward. But if I do it against my will, if I'm forced to do it, then the dispensation is upon me. Chapter 17 of uh, Proverbs and uh, verse uh, 22. A merry heart doeth like a medicine, but a broken spirit dryeth the bones. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, a joyful heart. Another word for the joy, joyful is merry. When the heart is joyful, he say it works like medicine. So then, those who are around ministers of the gospel, I repeat, must uh, do what uh, lies in their hand to ensure that they provide the environment for a joyful spirit. Now, joy as an oil is produced by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that produces joy and distributes joy. Chapter 61, and can we read verse uh, 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 1 to 3 of Isaiah? The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord that anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn in Zion, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Can you see that included in things that make people to live a life that glorifies God is joy. So then you find out that 
this joy is a product of the Holy Spirit. Verse 7. For your shame you shall have double. For your confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore in their land they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. Holy Spirit produces joy in men. So then we can obtain joy in the presence of God. In the presence of God, there is a joy. In Isaiah 65 and verse 14, 65th of Isaiah verse 14, Behold, my servant shall sing for joy of heart, but you shall cry for sorrow of heart, and shall hope for vexation of spirit. That is the promise of God. Verse 18, But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing, and her people a joy. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem and in joy and, and joy in my people and the joy of and the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. This is God's strong promise concerning his people. So then verse uh, uh, 5 and 10 of uh, Isaiah 66, 5 and 10. Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word, your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, and let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to you a joy, and there shall be a shame, God appearing to you a joy. When God appears in the case and in the matter and in the life, joy will flood the heart. Verse 6, a voice of noise from the city, a voice from temple, a voice of the Lord that uh, render recompense to his enemies when god moves in he begin to clear things that are responsible for the sadness of his people verse 10 rejoice ye with jerusalem and be glad with her all ye that love her rejoice for joy with her all ye that mourn for her so when we show interest in the house of god and in the things of god we also uh, generate joy through our even association with the Lord and attending to his house. Psalm 16 and verse 11. Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence, in the presence of God, is fullness of joy. And your right hand there are a pleasure forevermore. Not only joy in the presence of God, there is refreshing in God's presence. So there is joy that comes through an accomplishment when somebody accomplishes a great feat for God joy comes and there is also joy that comes through deliverance the one that uh, the Jews had in Esther chapter 8 16 and 17 we read and 9 22 came as a result of deliverance that God gave them now but uh, let us see the joy that Nehemiah had in Nehemiah chapter 12 verse 43 Nehemiah 12 and verse 43 also that day they offered great sacrifices and rejoiced for God has made them rejoice with great joy the wives also and the children rejoiced so that the joy of Jerusalem was had even afar off that was joy that was drawn from the accomplishment of the assignment of rebuilding the broken wall and the fixing the gates as carried out by Nehemiah and the people so at the end of that was project joy comes or joy came may I inform us that uh, there is joy in the vision we are pursuing as we begin to see little results here and there, you see joy coming. But then the ultimate joy will come at the end when we are able to deliver the work to God, deliver the church to God, the church without wrinkle, a church that is prepared for rapture. Now in Ezra chapter 6, 16 and 22, And the children of Israel, the priests and the Levites and the rest of the children of the captivity, kept the dedication of the, his house of God, this house of God with joy. They kept it with joy. And verse 22, And they kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days with joy. For the Lord had uh, 
The Lord has made them joyful and turned the heart of the king of Assyria unto them to strengthen their hands in the work of the house of God, the God of Israel. They were seeing little progress here and there. And as a result of the little success and progress in the building of the temple anchored by Ezra, the people were so happy about that. Chapter 3 of Ezra 12 and 13. But many of the priests and Levites and chief of the fathers who were ancient men that had seen the first house when the foundation of this house was laid before their eyes wept with a loud voice and many shouted aloud for joy so that the people could not discern noise of the shout of joy from the noise of the weeping of the people for the shout for the people shouted with a loud shout and the noise was heard afar off. That was when the foundation of the house of God in, in Jerusalem was uh, being laid for a starting off of repair and rebuilding. So then, joy also comes through righteousness and uprightness in doing things. When somebody uh, uh, does things and he looks into what he has done and finds out that there is a, that he did everything rightly, everything righteously, no compromise, joy comes. And in chapter 32 of Psalm and verse 10, Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusted in the Lord, mercy shall compass him. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. So then, favor also to the righteous doing favor to the righteous uh, is a cause for 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 joy when you favor the cause of the righteous you draw joy when you do favor to the righteous it also draw joy through that psalm 35 and verse 27 let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause yeah, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which had pleasure in the prosperity of his people. So then, through salvation and receiving forgiveness of sin, joy also is received. Psalm chapter 40, can we read verse 1? I waited patiently for the Lord, and they inclined unto me, I had my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the Marie clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. And he had put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it, and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. He put uh, joy, he put uh, songs of joy, songs of happiness on my lips. And then, and Psalm 32, 1 to 3, we have read Psalm 32, but now let's read 1 to 3 so that we can see that when somebody's sins are forgiven, joy is uh, given an entrance. Now, verse 1 Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputed no iniquity, in whose spirit there is no guile. While I kept silence, my bones waxed. Oh, through my rolling all the day long. But when sins are forgiven, then a way for joy is paid. So, it follows that through laboring and sowing in tears, we receive uh, joy as well as through godly counselors. When we listen to godly counseling, we receive joy. And when we, when we do the work of God with all our mind and we are ready to make the required sacrifices, at the time of reaping, joy will come. Psalm 126 and verse 5 and 6, They that sow in tears, sow in pain, sow with all the trouble, shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his chiefs with him. There are people that are in church. Well, while others are there, taking troubles to do ministry work, they are very tactical and they are dodging the work. But when God begins to favor 
those who are taking all the trouble and taking all the pain and taking all the sorrow and not complaining you find that uh, this other person who did not uh, care about uh, taking the trouble we find them now becoming envious and jealous as we find in many of the places and i hope that that should not be a description of you in proverbs chapter 12 and verse 20 now deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil but to the counselors of peace is joy those who give people good counsel who are godly counselors they receive joy by doing that now we also draw joy as we labor and labor and during and begin to see the fruit of our labor and begin to harvest the labor we have uh, labored chapter 9 of uh, isaiah and verse 3 isaiah chapter 9 and verse 3 that was multiply the nation and not increase the joy the joy the joy before the D according to the joy in harvest and as men rejoice when they divide the spoil after people have gone to war and fought when they were going they go with fear they go with sorrow they go with pain they will go with uncertainties but then when the battle is won and you find them returning they return with joy they return as heroes they return as victors returning with joy now i want us to know that uh, joy is necessary if we must uh, draw blessings of god from salvation after one is born again and uh, he wants to enjoy the blessings of being born again joy plays a very vital role look at uh, uh, isaiah 26 1 and 2 in that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city, salvation will God appoint for wars and bulwarks. Open ye the gates that the righteous nation which keepeth the truth may enter in. Can we read Isaiah chapter 12? Read with me Isaiah chapter 12 and verse 3. Isaiah 12 verse 3. Behold, God is my salvation, I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength, and my song he also is become my salvation. And verse 3, Therefore with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of uh, salvation. Salvation is like a well that contains water. Now joy is required to draw from it. We have a woman that was seeking the fruit of womb and was a very sorrowful woman. The first thing God did was to remove her sorrow. And once the sorrow was removed, the next thing was a visitation. And that we know that gave rise to a prophet that Israel had not had a man like him somewhere. Now in 2 Kings chapter 3, 13 to 18, we also saw when uh, two kings uh, king of judah and the king of israel they came to to elijah elisha for prophecy and then Eli for uh, to be sorted out of their confusion because elisha was uh, not happy elisha was not properly disposed toward the king of uh, israel his the sorrow and the sadness and offense blocked the entrance into the realm of the spirit until they needed to play some song some minstrel some music to give him some joy which opened heaven as we were told this other day by our father in the lord and also when desire is uh, accomplished that produces joy when you have a desire and that desire is realized it will give rise to joy Proverbs 20, 15 and 23. A man had joy by the answer of his mouth, and a word spoken in due season. How good is it? A man had joy by the answer of his tongue. Joy can come into your life 
depending on how you respond with your tongue to issues that come around. Chapter 21 and verse 15 of Proverbs, It is joy to the just to do judgment, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. And chapter 13 of uh, Proverbs, and 12 and 19, chapter 13, 12 and 19 of Proverbs. Hope deferred maketh the heart sick, but when desire cometh, it is a tree of life. It produces joy and uh, uh, brings uh, uh, refreshing. Now, verse 19, the desire accomplished is sweet to the soul. Another word for joy is sweetness to the soul, and desire accomplished makes the soul to be sweet. Now, how do you explain joy? You feel sweet inside. You feel happy. You feel glad. And uh, that is it. But it is abomination to fools to depart from evil. So then, we have seen uh, that uh, joy can be produced through all of these things. But then we need to know also that joy is needed as we travel to heaven. The journey to heaven with all the encumbrances, with all the challenges, will be a journey that uh, one will not be able to make without joy. Nobody will successfully run the Christian race to, to the successful end. Nobody will be able to do the work of ministry to the successful end that is lacking joy. Can we quickly see some uh, Isaiah 30? Uh, 5 and verse 10 and the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and the everlasting joy upon their heads they shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sign shall flee away so you can see it ransom of the Lord returning with songs and with everlasting joy 51 and verse 3 and verse 11 of Isaiah so joy is important the joy of the Lord. That is why the, when somebody gives his life to the Lord, Jesus gives him joy of salvation. Joy of salvation is different from joy that comes through accomplishment and uh, through material things. Isaiah 51 verse 3. For the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places. And he will make her wilderness like Eden and a desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found therein. Thanksgiving and the voice of melody. Verse, verse 11. Therefore the redeem of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion. And everlasting joy shall be upon their head as they return, as they journey, as the pilgrim return. They shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. That is the word of God. So then, it follows that uh, through joy, we experience the hand of God. God's hand is drawn into a life. God's hand is drawn into a ministry, into a people. Through joy. Isaiah 52 verse 9. Break forth into joy. Sing together, ye west places of Jerusalem. For the Lord had comforted his people. He had redeemed Israel. He has redeemed Israel. And chapter 55 and verse 12 of Isaiah. For you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing. As you go out with joy and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands for you. And chapter 60 of Isaiah verse 15. So then, all of these truths we are just trying to show you and establish the fact that you need joy of salvation. And when you discover that your joy is now hinged on things happening around, there is problem. Joy of salvation is what we are, you need in order to continue in the journey and in the walk. Isaiah 60:15. Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through thee, I will make thee an eternal excellence, a joy of many generations. Chapter 65 and verse 14 of uh, Isaiah. Behold, my servant shall sing for joy of heart, but you shall cry for sorrow of heart. 
and shall hold for vexation of spirit my servants. God promises given joy, even joy uh, in the midst of, uh, of uh, darkness, in the midst of joy, of uh, sorrow rather. We enjoy uh, joy. God's word is another source of joy. When the word of God is received, we experience joy. The word of God is a carrier of joy. Jeremiah chapter 15 and verse 16. The words were found, I did eat them. And the word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. That is uh, it. The word of God is a carrier of joy. And uh, God Almighty has made a very strong promise even to the man of God, Jeremiah, and also even the man of God, our Father in the Lord. Sometime in the year 2015, a promise of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, joy being had among his people was uh, given clearly by the Lord to his servant. In Jeremiah 31 and verse 13, then shall the virgin rejoice in dance, both young men and old together. For I will turn their mourning into joy, and will comfort them, and make them rejoice from their sorrow. 33, 9 to 11 of Jeremiah. You will see that, that, that where the Lord gave a very strong promise to his servant, especially in verse 11. The voice of joy. And the, and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, the voice of the bride, the voice of them that shall say, praise the Lord of hosts, for the Lord is good, for his mercy endureth forever, and of them that shall bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord, for I will cause to rejoice the captivity of the land, as at the first says the Lord. Now verse 10, Thus says the Lord again, there shall be heard in this place, which you said that be desolate without man and without beast, even in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, that are desolate without man and without inhabitant and without beast, the voice of joy. That is what God, the promise he gave to our Father in the Lord, and wish it is for him and for us. And so it is necessary for productive life. Joy is necessary for productivity, in life and productivity in ministry there cannot be effective life a productive life without joy and there cannot be a productive ministry a successful ministry from a heart and from a life that is dried up can we read can we read uh, Joel chapter 1 and uh, verse 9 the meat offering and the drink offering is cut off from the house of the Lord. The priest, the, the Lord's ministers mourn. The feed is wasted. The land mourned. For the corn is wasted. The new wine is dried up. The oil languished. Be ashamed, O ye husbands, men. Hold, O ye virgin, vine dressers, for the wheat and for the barley. Because the harvest is of the field is perished, the wine is drying up, and the fig tree languished, the pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, and the apple tree, even all the trees of the field are withered. Why? Because joy is withered away from the sons of men. There cannot be effective ministry when the person ministering is ministering without joy, is serving without joy, service without joy. Level without joy pays no good dividend. And so, can we read Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 16? When I heard my belly trembled, my lips quivered at the voice, rottenness entered into my bones, and I trembled in myself. That I might rest in the day of trouble. When he cometh unto the people, he will invade them with his troop. Now, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vine. The level of the olive shall fail, and the fish shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no head in the stall. 
yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength and he will make my feet like hands feet and he will make me to walk upon my high places to the chief singers on my strength instrument. Can you see the decision of uh, the writer to maintain joy even in the midst of sorrow because of what he knew the part that joy plays. Chapter 3 of Zephaniah and verse 17. The Lord their God in the midst of this mighty he will save, he will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. So God's word brings joy and God has promised joy to his servant and it is necessary for a productive ministry, a successful ministry. And may we also inform us that the kingdom of God is the kingdom of joy. Kingdom of God is the kingdom of God. That is why he says in Matthew 25, 21 and 23, Enter thou into the joy of your Lord. That is to the overcomers. And then he said, The kingdom of God is not in meat and in drink, but in joy of the Holy Spirit. Can we read Romans chapter 14 and verse 17? Romans 14, 17. Can we read it? So we can see what the kingdom is of. For the kingdom of God is not meat, and not about eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Kingdom of joy, kingdom of peace, kingdom of righteousness, kingdom of joy that is given by the Holy Spirit, not joy that is gotten from material things. Chapter 15 and verse 13. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace, believing that you may, uh, you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. And verse 32, that I may come unto you with joy by the will of God, and may with you be refreshed. So then it follows that one unfailing source of joy is uh, when you get involved in promoting God's work, God's kingdom, yes, on earth, and that increases the joy to unspeakable level. That is why we, we read in Luke chapter 10, where Jesus said, don't rejoice because of this, but rejoice that your name is written in the book of life. When you maintain sound salvation, it gives you joy. When you get involved in soul winning, it gives you joy. It opens you to joy. And then the Holy Spirit also gives joy. Yes, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit is joy. And in Thessalonians, First Thessalonians chapter 1, and verse 6. Can we read First Thessalonians chapter 1? And let's read verse 6. And he became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction, with joy of the Holy Ghost. Joy of the Holy Ghost. So Holy Ghost is at the center of joy. Oneness and unity are conditions that people need to meet if they desire joy. You want to have joy, be a person who maintains unity of the brethren. Be a person that maintains joy of the brethren. In Philippians chapter 1 and verse 4. Philippians 1 verse 4. Always in every prayer of mine, for you all making requests with joy. And verse 25, verse 25. Having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for your furtherance and joy of faith. There is the joy of faith. Chapter 2 of uh, Philippians and verse 2. Fulfill ye my joy that you be like-minded. Can you see that? Having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Now 17, yea, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice and, and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. That is Paul talking. For the same cause also do ye joy and rejoice with me. So, the, when you see that you are converse, living right, and following the ways of God, it also gives joy. Now let's look at First Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 9. When you see your converts, they are following God, they are serving God, they are excited about the Almighty God. It gives joy. First Thessalonians, quickly, chapter 3, verse 9. 
For what thanks can we render to God again for you, for all the joy wherewith we joy for your sakes before our God? And chapter 2 of uh, the same First Thessalonians 19 and 20. For what is our hope or joy or crown or rejoicing? And not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus that is coming, for you are our glory and joy. When you see your converts doing well, when you see that they are doing exploit, they are moving forward in their Christian life, it gives joy. When you see the word of God you are preaching, bearing fruit in the life of your hearers, it gives joy. Now, news of salvation of uh, the people you take as your children, both biological children or children of the ministry, equally gives joy. Let's see this before we rise to talk to the Lord so that uh, you will uh, know the need for you to never allow anything to tamper your relationship with God because if it does, then trouble begins. First John chapter 1 and verse 4 And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. I write unto you showing the concern of John, John the beloved of the joy of the of his people ministers of god should be concerned about their joy about the health about the happiness of the people they are teaching and they are leading now verse uh, uh, 12 of uh, uh, second john have many things to write unto you i would not write with paper and ink but i trust to come unto you and speak face to face that our joy may be full. Can you see, as I speak face to face with you, I draw joy from that. And verse 4 of Top John, I have no greater joy than to hear, to have a testimony that my children walk in truth. When your biological children are walking in truth and you are a man of truth, it gives you joy. When you find also spiritual children walking in the truth you have taught them, this produces joy. But when you look at your children and they are living contrary and walking contrary to the truth that you as a father, as a mother, it is disseminating, it is a source of sorrow. So those of us that have our, our parents, spiritual parents and physical parents, biological parents, will be very careful because what we do can increase their joy. What we do can equally also uh, increase sorrow and deplete their joy. And finally, Jude, verse 24, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. In the day when we shall be presented before God, the joy that we will have is exceeding joy. And let us focus on that exceeding joy, the final joy that comes in, that will come in the day when we shall be presented faultless before God. Now we can pray, having heard that, that joy is a necessary, then is an oil we need to lubricate our lives as pilgrims, as sojourners, as we journey from earth to heaven, and as we carry out the, uh, the adult work, uh, as we carry on with the heavy responsibility of ministry. Let us pray. Eternal God in heaven, we come this morning to bless you because you have spoken the word into our lives. My Father, you have taken time extensively this Saturday morning to speak to us. That is because you are concerned. That is because you are interested. That is because you want us to have joy. That is the reason you have given us the details, showing us your mind, showing us the way into this joy, and showing us what we have stand to enjoy through this joy, showing us what exploit we can do. My Father and my God, I want to pray, Lord, equally winter to show us how our joy can be sabotaged by, uh, by, uh, by discouraging lifestyle of spiritual children as well as biological children. My Father and my God, I pray you that uh, you help us, Lord, to do whatsoever possible to keep a joyful heart and work carefully to maintain our salvation so as to ensure that nothing will cause leakage of our joy of the Lord. Thank you this morning for this truth you've revealed. I ask the Holy Spirit to go on digging deeper and deeper and deeper until the best of us is brought. 
We give you glory. We give you honor. In this journey to heaven, O oh God, as we are on the way from Zion or earth to the Zion in heaven, I pray, Lord, in glory that our ways, our path, O oh God, the thick path, the tough path of affliction, and difficult path be watered by the joy that is supplied by heaven. Thank you, our Father and our God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I want us to pray for the rekindling of the fire of uh, effective soul winning. Seeing it is necessary for renewal of our joy. Let us pray. This morning we come almighty God. We have seen how the people came back when they went for outing. For soul winning, for evangelism. Father, and as they returned, there was joy that came as a result of uh, evangelism. There was exploit done. They saw manifestation of God. They saw Satan bowing before them. Father, I pray, Lord, in glory, as uh, the lockdown and pandemic is fizzling out, I pray, Lord, that we will not lose our heart of soul winning. Rather, we ask that the Spirit of the living God will rekindle us again. Thank you, Father, for answer. Let the fire and the zeal of soul winning, O oh God, begin to burn afresh in our hearts. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We also had Jesus saying to this joyful 70 that returned, saying, don't just return because the devils are subject unto you, but return. Be rejoice because your names are written in the book of life. Showing the critical source of uh, enduring joy, salvation. I want us to pray for yourself and pray for members of your family that every person will be very sure of genuine salvation. Everybody will be sure that his name or her name is written in the book of life. Father, we come this morning to thank you because the truth is clear that uh, Joy that comes as a result of service is not the ultimate. Joy that comes as a result of uh, what we see happening, as a result of accomplishment, as a result of successful ministry, as a result of touching other lives, cannot be compared in any way with the joy of salvation, with the joy of one's name being written in the book of life. Therefore, this morning, great Father in heaven, I pray, Lord in heaven, that those who are that are listening to me and praying with me and uh, their salvation has been tampered like that of David that they, that they should do something quickly in order to see a restoration of salvation and then a restoration of joy. My Father and my God, David lost salvation and then and joy was affected and he cried. Yes, he cried. He confessed his sins. He has got to wash him first before he now asked for a restoration of joy of salvation. He knew that uh, you know, the joy that is gotten from temporal things, they don't last. They are coming from the outward. And the outward joy is not the major joy. That the joy that comes from the inner man, the joy that is given by peace of mind, the peace of uh, one having his name written in the book of life, has no comparison. Therefore, this morning, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I bring everyone in my house, O oh God, beginning with my wife, all my children, and my brother's children, and sister's children, and every person, great father, that is around. My, my prayer this morning, Lord, is that uh, you will touch our souls. Let nobody be under my roof without salvation. Let nobody be, O oh God, that has come out of my loins, Lord, be joking with this matter of salvation or to be having fake salvation. Salvation that can tell lies. Salvation, my Father, that is, uh, that is questionable. I pray that the Spirit of the living God, you deal with every questionable things in the life of anybody, any member of my house. Thank you, everlasting Father. I present the church before you and members of our families. Oh God, especially key workers and pastors, that uh, nobody, great father, will be without salvation. And no member of the house, Lord, will have the fake salvation. Rather, let every person embrace salvation fully. Thank you, Father, for answer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we're going to pray 
God to open the eyes of uh, all the watchmen brethren again to see the invaluableness of soul and the benefits of winning soul another eyes of the people being opened that is the eyes of the people being opened greatly watch my people to see the invaluableness of soul what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul and what shall a man give in exchange for his own life and then give us wisdom to aggressively go after this soul session give us wisdom to to pursue souls wisdom and courage wisdom and courage to pursue soul winning let us pray father this morning we come i know that a man will continue to joke with soul winning when he does not know the value of souls and the benefits that uh, I will accrue to those who are involved in soul winning. I therefore pray this morning for a fresh opening of our eyes as watchmen, Father, to embrace aggressively the soul winning issue, soul winning project, which for which purpose you raise us, for which purpose we are brought into the faith. In the name of Jesus, I also ask that you give us courage our God and our Father, courage to embrace, courage to pursue all the sources of joy religiously as revealed. See that uh, we cannot run this Christian race without joy. I ask, ask the Lord also that uh, the grace, the courage, the wisdom to pursue the things are, that are shown as uh, uh, critical sources of uh, experiencing joy be pursued. Thank you, Father, this morning. In Jesus' name, Amen. We saw that when joy finished in the days of Joel, everything about them finished. Everything dried up. The works of their hands dried up. We saw that uh, when joy finishes in a man, ministry will be frustrated we saw that we cannot run ministry without with with without joy with a finished joy we saw that we cannot uh, run this christian race with a, a finished joy we cannot be effective ministers we cannot connect to the realm of the spirit without joy of the heart so let us pray that whatever that will dry our joy that god almighty goes against whatsoever that will drive dry the joy of your family the joy of the church my father and my god i come this morning we know that the devils on our journey to heaven he lays traps father he lays pits and uh, and uh, stumbling blocks that are capable of making us to stumble so that we can lose our joy so that our joy can dry up thereby frustrating the race thereby frustrating the ministry but this morning we come asking the lord in the name of jesus whatever the devils have laid on our way father whatever the devil has raised up as a means of uh, drying our joy as a means of draining us evacuating us and emptying us and plundering the joy of the Lord, thereby leaving us plundered and empty, and my father, empty vessels that will make noise without any real achievement. As that the Lord will deal with this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Sorrow blocks physical uh, uh, womb. The womb of Samuel's mother was blocked by sorrowful spirit. But then conception of call when the sorrow departed the spiritual womb of elisha was blocked yes he, access to the realm of the spirit he couldn't until some mechanism was brought the mechanism of praise and worship now to remove the sorrow i want us to pray against uh, all 
things that are constituting a sorrow to men of God around us. Our pastor, the GS, everything that is constituting sorrow and sadness and pain. Want to attack them this morning. Also, whatever that is causing sorrow and pain and sadness to uh, daddies, other daddies and ministers of the gospel. Let's ask God to push those things out of the way. This morning we present our daddy in the Lord. Another daddy's great father and members of their family. Whatsoever that has been a source of sorrow, a source of pain, a source of sadness, a source of mourning, blocking the flow, blocking the joy. My father, we know that uh, productivity flows through joy. Inspiration, oh God, comes through joy. A sorrowful man, Father, has been cut off from his inspiration. My God and my Father, an offended heart, a sad heart. Father, a mourning heart, blessed Redeemer, cannot be inspired. Therefore, we pray, oh God, for our pastor, I ask that everybody surrounding him, Lord, we learn how to make him happy. Oh God, I also pray for those of us that are supporters, every minister of the watchman, all the people around us, Lord, we vow not to be a source of sorrow, a source of sabotaging the joy and the peace, thereby sabotaging the ministry as a whole and depriving the people, the blessings that will come if their pastor is able to assess the realm of the spirit to come out with the prophetic, to come out with the things that will bless the church. Father, help all our family members to take a stand and vow never to be a source of sorrow, but a source of joy, a source of connection, not a source of disconnection. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Let us pray for, uh, for, for, for the Lord to visit us uh, today and uh, answer our prayers and bring blessings into our lives. Take us out and then I help us to make a good weekend and grant us a happy weekend. Father, we thank you this morning. I will bless you because of your concern, because of your mercy, because of your care. We are sure you are going to take us out this morning. You are going to give us a happy weekend. We look forward to a happy coming week, a joyful coming week. We look forward to the time of Father that we joy of God in our lives. We withdraw favor. We withdraw from salvation, words of salvation in the coming week and in the coming days. Father, we look forward, O oh God, that we are going to be very, very profitable and very, very useful even in the coming days in ministry. Father, we look forward that there's going to be a shout of joy again. Father, we look forward to being instrument of constant revival, my Father, and affecting life as we exhibit the joy of God, the joy of God in the midst of sorrow, in the midst of lack, in the midst of a pain and pandemic. My Father and my God, in the midst of the world crying for crisis, blessed Redeemer, I pray that the joy of salvation be maintained. Thank you this morning as you take us out and bring us back and see to our execution of every of the program you have for us this week. Give us grace to tie up everything and in readiness for the coming week. Blessed be God forever. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Let's take this hymn 201 and then we'll call it a uh, 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 day. Give me a double portion. Long ago, in the days of old, so the man of God we are told, as he talked to Elijah that day, his request he did repeat, standing at Elijah's feet, a double portion I can hear him say. Give me, Lord, a double portion, pour your spirit on me. To eyes of faith, thy wondrous works I can see. But I need thy happy hand in this troubled, sinful land. Give me, Lord, a double portion from thee. As Elijah stood that day, to Elisha he did say, Ask me what I shall do unto thee. And Elijah then replied, walking out, and Elijah 
did reply, working out, Elijah side, a double portion, let it fall on me, fall on me. Give me, Lord, a double portion, pour your spirit on me, to eyes of faith, that wondrous works I can see. But I need thy happy hand in this troubled, sinful land. Give me, Lord, a double portion from thee. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Good morning and God bless you. And happy, happy weekend.